see how we plan for that. So take your number 10 or number 8 bristle brush, or number 12, depending on how big your tree is, and take this down here. Now the secret is in loading the brush and, and getting the brush manipulated properly. See how I'm flattening it out there? That scares a lot of people, but this is the fan effect that you want that brush to have so that when you start doing the leaves, it'll be fluffy. Okay, now we take the hooker's green, the burnt sienna. I always put a little purple in with my green, and I'll probably add a little white. I like to just sort of soften the color. So you've got the green, the sienna, and a little purple, and a little touch of white. <clears throat> now come back up to your palette, I mean to your canvas. And if your canvas is bouncing, you can take your finger and push on it, and that'll kind of hold it from moving. And then start just like this. Now first we're going to shape the tree with a dark underpainting, then we're going to highlight it. You know, just watch how this develops. This really is exciting. See, I'm just dabbing straight on. And I'm going to sort of create an umbrella type effect. I'm going to jump around down here, creating little pockets of space that will suggest the leaves of a tree. Now, this is just the underpainting. We're going to highlight it here in just a second. Now notice how I'm developing little pockets, but I'm leaving space as we go around. That's called negative space. Now, again, if you've been following the show for a while, you, you probably know uh, what I'm talking about because we, I fuss at you all the time about that. But this is really neat. Okay, now come right on across. Down right there. See how nice that's shaping up? And just reloading, dabbing straight on. This also gives it a nice texture, which is really good. Now, after you've got your basic shape here, isn't that a beautiful little tree? Then you come down here, you just take a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow on the edge. Now, by the way, this color can change endlessly. I mean, there's endless numbers of color combinations. I'm just showing you the technique and how to do it. And then when you get to your painting and you're ready to uh, paint, you can change the color. It could be fall, it could be spring, it could be summer. Now, see, I've got sort of an intermediate green that's a little bit lighter than what we had and then we'll put the final highlight on. This one, assuming that the light's coming in from the left, now watch how we just gently highlight the outer edge of our leaves. And it's barely touching, but it creates a wonderful softness. It looks so realistic. 